again, the thinking, ladies and gentlemen, just the thinking. We have two functions, right? Is this function continuous on all x? No, so there could be a discontinuity here, right? Because remember, the question is asking, I didn't write down the question, the question is asking what are the values of k that are going to make this function continuous, right? So um, we're looking for the value, though, that's going to make this continuous. What value is going to like connect, you know, the, what value or what value is going to make this continuous? Because we know right now this function is not continuous, right? And if you guys remember, I think this is the one that I think, yeah. Um, uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll do that when we finish it. So this value we know has discontinuities. We just don't know which ones they are. Um, and we know that this discontinuity happens at negative 3, or at least one of them, right? So let's go ahead and first evaluate the limit as x approaches the root to negative 3, because that's where it's going to be. That's not going to be the value. So I have 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 all over x squared minus 9. Now, we need to figure out our discontinuities. And that's something that you guys practiced in your last homework, as well as what we did on our quiz and what we've done before. So you have to know how to factor. Um, I can see my leading coefficient is a 2. So I know my factors are going to be 2x and x. I automatically see the denominator is a difference of 2 squares. So I like seeing those, because those are easy to factor. Right? Um, so now I just need to figure out what two numbers multiply to give me negative 3 but are going to add to give me a 5. Well, I know that the, it, needs a, it needs to add to give me 5. So if I did 2 times 3, that would give me positive 6, right? And if I multiplied x times negative 1, that would subtract 1 and give me 5. And negative 1 times positive 3 is a negative 3. So by factoring, I can see that my solution up there is right there. And I can always verify my factoring. Just make sure you foil it back out, make sure it works. Oh, sorry, I switched those. That's positive, that's negative. Right? OK, so we evaluate the, so now let's simplify the limit using some limit notation here. I'll bring this back down. I know those are going to divide out. So I'm left with 2x minus 1 over x minus 3. which now I can evaluate for, which would be 2 times negative uh, 3 minus 1 over negative 3 minus 3. Let's see, that's going to be a negative 7 over negative 6, which equals 7 over 6. All right, so let's first of all talk about discontinuities again, because I talked about it in the last class period, but I didn't go over this. So we have two discontinuities. We have a discontinuity at x equals negative 3, because negative 3 makes that 0. And we have discontinuity at x equals 3, because 3 makes that 0, correct? Since this is factored out, since you can factor this out, that's what we call removable. This discontinuity is not removable, so that is, um, that's a non-removable discontinuity, correct? All right. However, if we look at 7 pi um, at the limit as x approaches negative 3, we, um, we get 7 over 6. Well, again, we need to now make sure that um, that is going to be equivalent to our other function from the, um, you could think of it, it's not really from the left or right side, but we know it has to equal that value. So we can just say k is equal to 7 pi over 6. And again, the value that I, I wanted to show you guys or to think about this, if you remember, 